Next, we are going to filter the Pokemon by type. For the list of types, we are simply going to copy them instead of retrieving them from the API. And we are going to use those types to call the API and retrieve the Pokemons of the selected type. I'm going to add the list to the video description so you can simply copy them. Let's create an interface for the Pokemon type. It will include the type name, URL and color. We are going to add the array of Pokemon types to the constants file. Let's paste the array of Pokemon types. Each element of the array is an object with the type name and the URL to the specific type on the Pokemon API. We are going to use that URL to retrieve the list of Pokemon of that specific type. Also, we are going to add an additional color property. For this, I am going to use the color variables from Material UI. You can choose whatever color you like. These material variables are simply strings that include a specific color. We are going to use this property to color the button of the Pokemon type. Let's also remove the unknown and shadow types from the array. Let's go to the flying type URL to see what we can retrieve. From this object, we are only interested in the ID of the type and the Pokemon array. This is an array containing all the Pokemon of this specific type. Each Pokemon from this array has the same name and URL attributes as our indexed Pokemon interface, so we can reuse it. Let's create a index. Let's create an indexed Pokemon by type interface to specify each element of the Pokemon array. Each Pokemon has a Pokemon attribute that will be of type indexed Pokemon and an additional slot attribute. Next. Let's create a Pokemon by type list response to tell Axios the structure of the Pokemon type API response. This will be an object with the ID of the type and a list of indexed Pokemon by type interfaces. Let's go back to the home component and create a new grid container component. And also, we are going to create two grid components inside the grid container component. We are going to move the Pokemon list component inside one of the grid components. And we are going to use the other one to add the Pokemon types filter buttons. Let's go back to the use Pokemon's hook and we are going to return the Pokemon list constant from there. And we are going to retrieve it in the home component form from the use Pokemon's hook. That way we can use the array of Pokemon types. Inside the new grid component, we are going to iterate over the array of Pokemon types and return a button with the type name. Next, we are going to add the variant property of the button and make it contained, and the SX property to edit its background color and make it equal to the color of the specific Pokemon name. Let's also add a little margin between the buttons. We now have a button for each Pokemon type with its corresponding color. Let's go back to the use Pokemon hook and add a selected type state. We are going to change this state when the user clicks a type button. Next, let's create a fetch Pokemons by type function. This function will be very similar to the fetch Pokemons function. First, we are going to check if there's a selected type, and if it is, we are going to call the URL for that specific time. We are going to tell Axios that it's going to receive a Pokemon by type list response that we created earlier in the interfaces file. If the Pokemon array of the API response exists, we are going to iterate over it and pass its Pokemon attribute to the indexed Pokemon to list Pokemon function, so we get a list Pokemon in response. Now we have an array of list Pokemon that we can assign to the Pokemon's state array. This will be an array with only Pokemon from the selected type. Also, we are going to reset the next URL state. So when we remove the type filter, we can start from the start of the Pokemon list again. Let's change the useEffect hook to execute each time the selected type state changes. 
If there's a selected state, we are going to call the fetch Pokemons by type function. If not, we are going to call the fetch Pokemon function instead. Now let's return the selected type, set selected type, and set Pokemons from this custom hook. Let's use them in the home component. Let's add a click event to the types button and call a handle select type function with the type as a parameter. Next, let's create the handle select type function. First, we'll check if the type passed as a parameter is not null. And if it's not, we are going to set the selected type. Otherwise, if the type passed is null, we are going to set the selected type to null and also, we will reset the Pokemon's array to an empty array. Now, when we click a Pokemon type button, we get only the Pokemons of that specific type. This is because we are now calling the type's endpoint of the Pokemon API. Finally, let's add an additional button that passes null to the handle select type function. So it sets the selected type to null and resets the Pokemon list. Now we can press the Alt button to set the selected type to null and call the base Pokemon API endpoint to get the original array of Pokemons. This was the final part of the Pokedex React series. I'm glad you watched it and I hope it was of help to you. If you like this tutorial series, feel free to subscribe to the channel to get notified when a new tutorial is released. Also, I'd like you to comment if you made your own Pokedex and what kind of tutorial would you like me to do next. Until next time.